Last night, a trade broke sending Jake Gensel to the Carolina Hurricanes, and we have the truth behind the trade coming up on this episode of Hatrick HQ, and it's trade deadline day. We're here, going to be here all day, bringing you updates on every trade that happens today, so make sure to go down below, hit that subscribe button, stick with us throughout the day, stick with us throughout the year, because uh, we're going to be here bringing you hockey content every single day, and before we get into it, Mark, I just want to say thanks to everybody for getting us to 3,000 subscribers just before the deadline day we really appreciate all your love and support here on the channel over this last eight months we really appreciate you guys getting us to 3,000 subscribers but with that said we're going to get into our first topic of the video today which is Kane's acquire Jake Gensel and as you take a look at this trade from Pierre Lebrun on Twitter, uh, this was Pittsburgh trading Jake Gensel and Ty Smith to Carolina in exchange for Michael Bunting, uh, Vili Koivunen, uh, Vasily Panamaranov, uh, Pano Marev, and then they have Cruz Lucius uh, with a conditional first uh, and a conditional fifth from Carolina as well. And Mark, I mean, this is a huge trade that kind of broke uh, last night. We were following it all day. And uh, Jake Gensel, as you take a look, obviously you know what you're getting with this guy. I mean, this guy is a purely offensive powerhouse. Uh, he's an elite skater, an elite offensive player. And so far this season with the Pittsburgh Penguins, averaging over a point per game with 52 points in 50 games played. And just before we get into talking about this, just want to take a look at where we might see him fit here. And uh, this is where I, what we look at their power play unit here. Uh, I mean, he's going to make an immediate impact into this power play unit. I really do think we could see him easily slot in on, on that left wing position there for this first power play unit. And if, if we take a look at their lines, obviously this team is really deep uh, throughout their lineup here. But we could maybe even see uh, Gensel come in and maybe take this first line left wing and maybe slide Svechnikov down to the second line. Or we could see the reverse. The reverse of that, leave Svechnikov up there with that top line that has been so dominant this season and just put Jake Gensel down here with with Martin Nikas, who's been a, a phenomenal player for this team this season. But Mark, I really like this trade for the Carolina Hurricanes. Obviously, they're kind of looking for another star boy here in Carolina, and this is what they got with Jake Gensel. Yeah, getting Gensel in is huge. We've seen so many teams in on this. I know Vegas was one of them. I don't even understand how they were in on them. You have the Vancouver Canucks being a serious suitor. There's a lot of teams, and Carolina won the lottery on Jake Gensel. He's a guy that's going to come in and might honestly be the best offensive player on Carolina. That's not knocking anyone on this lineup. I'm just saying Jake Gensel is the real deal. We've seen him produce with Sidney Crosby, without Sidney Crosby. And getting him in without an extension might be a little scary for some Carolina fans. But Carolina's going to do what they can to get him signed to an extension. They're in the midst of wanting to go on a Stanley Cup run. And bringing in the biggest trade deadline piece for not as much as I was expecting is a huge win. You get a guy that plays in your top six immediately, probably in the top line, power play one. And you do bring in Ty Smith, who might not have a lot of potential, but it's a piece that they could kind of dangle around maybe this offseason, maybe next offseason. He's a piece that might come in and prove uh, me wrong and just provide offense and step up his game. But overall, the main piece is to look at Gensel, and I think Carolina came out victorious with a guy like this. Yeah, I definitely have to agree with you. I think this is a, an amazing trade for both sides here. I think Pittsburgh gets a lot of uh, capital or, yeah, back in return here to kind of maybe retool this offseason maybe we may even see something here uh today during the trade deadline but uh like we said back to Gensel I think this is an amazing addition for the Carolina Hurricanes and this guy's just really going to help propel them through the playoffs this year and I mean right now over a point per game we could easily see him you know pick up his game here uh play in Carolina and maybe he could be even better with this team yeah, that's a big thing. We're going to see Gensel get to a new chapter of his game. Obviously, he has performed without Crosby, but a majority of his game has been with him. So it's nice to see him go to this new team and see who he builds chemistry with. We could see him completely explode, explode and go over a point per game, or we can just see him stay at his current pace. Either way, Carolina fans are going to absolutely love this guy. Yeah, I definitely have to agree with you. And the other piece of this trade is Ty Smith, and he's no joke either. If we take a look at him, I mean, this guy has been a great prospect, a first, a former first-round draft pick, a really great 
great offensive defenseman, a great skater, and so far with the Wilkes-Barre Scranton Penguins in the AHL this season, has 32 points in 51 games as a defenseman, and I really like this prospect. Uh, I was following this guy, uh, you know, for a while, uh, you know, after his uh, Young Guns crap came out, uh, If any for any card collectors out there, but I think this guy is going to be a great offensive defenseman in this league. I think he just needs time to develop and uh, uh, really, you know, uh, find his role uh, within a team. Yeah, right now, Ty Smith hasn't really got his uh, feet pretty much wet in the NHL yet. He has got some stints, and he hasn't looked amazing while he was in the NHL. But this guy does have time to grow. He has time to just improve his two-way game, his offensive game. And overall, he is projected to make the NHL, but he might not come in as a superstar. I think this was more of just adding him in to get more picks back for Pittsburgh. But overall, I think he's a great addition, and it's a great upside uh, player for Carolina. Yeah, I definitely have to agree. I think this guy has such a high ceiling, and I definitely think we will see him wearing a Carolina Hurricanes uniform at some point in his career and you know what all it takes is for him to get his feet wet once and you never know he can be a staple on that power on that uh defensive pairings for the carolina hurricanes but we're going to talk about the second part of this trade which is the pens get a prospect haul and uh, as we take a look here um obviously with trading G jake gensel the penguins ltir uh, is relieved by six million uh they're currently short 2.275 million to be cap compliant therefore additional moves need to be made before March 8th and these they say the options includes trades to decrease the cap LTIR player may be rust only if expected to be long term uh, long injured enough and maybe reassignments could happen here uh, but uh, we do also see here, uh, this is what the picks that we mentioned here that are going back in, uh, or the prospects going back in Pittsburgh's direction here. Obviously, we got Philly uh, Koivin in here. They say he has hockey, high hockey sense, a playmaker, supports plays well. Skating, it, it may be a little bit of a weakness, but his upside is top nine potential. They also have Vasily Panamarev. Uh, he's hardworking, two-way forward, bottom six potential. And then they got Cruz Lucius, who's deceptive, flashy playmaker skating also a weakness but he's skilled but style may not translate to the nhl so you do get some some three maybe lower tier prospects here in this trademark but i really do think that uh you know it was the great uh, great return for pittsburgh in this situation obviously uh they were they needed to move this guy and you know they got back what they could one thing I'm really surprised about, I thought Pittsburgh would acquire maybe a top prospect. I know they didn't touch any of Carolina's top prospects. They do get a couple of guys that obviously have potential. I'd probably end up saying one of them doesn't look great, and they turn into the next Sidney Crosby, so I can't say anything about that. But you also get a first, which is conditional. And the only bad thing about this, if Carolina does not make the finals, this turns into a second. So Pittsburgh's in a weird spot of not getting any top prospects, possibly getting a second round pick, plus the conditional fifth. Yes, Michael Bunting's a great add-in. He's a guy that's going to come in, be put on Crosby's line, look like Chris Kunitz 2.0. But getting this guy in when the team is in the midst of looking to get younger, but also looking to compete, is just kind of a head-scratcher from Kyle Dubas, in my opinion. Yeah, I mean, like we know Michael Bunting, a former Trail Maple Leaf. We know what style of game he has. I think he's going to have a great impact here in Pittsburgh. But like you said, it's kind of unknown. You never know. One of these guys could, you know, be a great NHL or, uh, you know, in the future. But it's hard to judge that right now at the trade deadline. And like you said, if that first turns into a second, I mean, that's going to be hard for the Pittsburgh Penguins to kind of swallow here. But uh, I think it's still a win-win for both sides because at the end of the day, getting needed to be moved here at the deadline and they did get the, the best return that they could but there was something interesting that did come out Marka, and that was uh about Sidney Crosby and what the message from uh, Carl Dubas was sent to the Penguins, Penguins with the trade of Jake Gensel. And he said, I don't know. So this is pretty interesting to me, Mark, that maybe maybe he's keeping things hush-hush here. Maybe he just doesn't want to talk uh, about the, the ins and outs of the business with uh, Carl Dubas. But at the end of the day, obviously, this was Sidney Crosby's guy. And I know he's feeling it not having him in the lineup anymore. Yeah, see, and there's a lot of friction going in between fans and the just everything in between the players. They don't seem too pleased with this Jake Gensel move. Obviously, it was something Dubas had to really think hard about. This extension would have really capped out just Pittsburgh in general. So moving them seemed like it almost had to be done, but it almost seems like Dubas put himself in that situation of picking up pieces, not making the playoffs, and it seems like it's caused a bit of friction in the locker room. Obviously, they still have to make another move. Maybe he makes a move that helps make Crosby happy. 
Riley Smith seems like the name that will be going out. I heard there's actually a lot more people calling about Riley Smith than Jake Grent, uh, Gensel due to the asking price. But the one thing Dubas really needs to look at is making sure Crosby stays happy and making sure this Pittsburgh team stays competitive as well. This is an aging team. Obviously, he wants to get a little younger as well. But you can't waste the last couple prime years of a lot of these players like Sidney Crosby and kind of take it for granted. Yeah, definitely. You know, it's kind of a hard situation that team's in because, like, we've been calling them this season the retirement home Penguins. I mean, the the average age of the team is so high. And obviously, like you said, you want to get younger, but you also do want to compete with, the with like, Crosby and Malkin and, and Latang all on their last legs of their career. You want to give those guys another shot at, at potentially winning uh, another Stanley Cup before they're done. So... It is going to be really interesting to see what Kyle Dubas and the Pens here do rest the rest of the trade line day. Maybe we see him be active in on Riley Smith. Maybe we see him be active on other players. Or maybe they just wait till the offseason and try to get some guys, where whether it's free agency, whether it's trading some of these uh, assets that they just, requ uh, just acquired from the Carolina Hurricanes. But nonetheless, it will be very interesting to see what happens for the Penguins and what's in their near future. But we'll keep you up to date on everything that happens. And we want to hear from you guys down below in the comment section. What do you you guys think about this Jake Gensel trade let us know down below we're going to get in everybody's favorite topic here which is comment of the day and the comment of the day today goes to our boy Jay Mondo he says good job KC good info once again I'm glad the Leafs got the 6-7 monster on D if he pans out it will be great go Leafs go and Mark I mean, it was just, you weren't involved in the Cade Weber video yesterday I just want to get your, you know, kind of initial reaction on getting this guy well, it seems like Brad Living's really putting the mold of we want big players, we want hard to play against players, and when you're six foot six, two hundred and twenty pounds, that's almost as hard as it can get. He's playing in Boston University right now. When the season concludes, it seems like signs are pointing with him to sign with the Marlies, make his way into the Leafs organization. So it's going to be exciting to see him get into the AHL, potentially getting into some preseason games, maybe whatever it takes to get into the NHL next season. But it's exciting to bring in a guy like this, at especially a low cost. Yeah, we love our big man project here on Hattrick HQ. Uh, I'm really excited to see this guy kind of transition over and get his first glimpse at pro hockey. I think he's going to be a, a really fun player to watch down in the Leafs system uh, throughout the years. But uh, if you guys enjoyed this video, make sure you go down below, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. Once again, we want to thank you guys for hitting us at the 3,000 subscriber mark. I mean, we, we really appreciate all your support uh, that you guys have been giving us throughout, you know, our, you know, tenure here on the channel. I mean... Uh, uh, it's been great to see like all the feedback and stuff that you guys give us down in the comment section as well. Really appreciate all your guys' support. But if you guys it, you know enjoy the NHL, make sure to check out a video we did yesterday covering the the Toronto Maple Leafs tr uh, trade deadline. Kind of, I mean, I'm sure they're going to be in the mix a little bit more here today. But we'll have to we'll keep you tuned on that as well. But as always, I've been your host Casey, alongside my co-host Mark Pye. Keep your stick on the ice.